Singapore 2022 recap. Wild race. It goes without saying that Singapore 2022 was one of the most exciting races of the season. Even though we didn't see many overtakes on track, we've seen many interesting situations developing on the track, and the fact that the start was delayed by a full hour due to heavy weather conditions just goes to show that Singapore is indeed one of the most demanding tracks on the calendar. The excitement started from the qualifying session on Saturday, when we saw Verstappen not finishing his lap due to not having enough fuel, and potentially starting from the pit stop. Leclerc gained yet another pole position, and it was yet another race where he couldn't convert it to win. So, step by step, here's what happened at the Singapore GP. The start of the race was a very interesting one, depending on who you ask. Red Bull fans were both excited and disappointed, because Verstappen had a poor start and lost four places at the beginning of the race, and Perez was able to grab the lead out of Leclerc's hands in Turn 1. Singapore GP isn't a track that is very familiar for overtaking, and that is something that has been proved yet again. There were overtakes, it wasn't very boring, but it was very challenging and the nature of the track was something that didn't allow the drivers to make risky moves. Apart from Perez, Sainz was another driver that gained one position at the start, jumping Hamilton for P3 and then successfully defending throughout the course of the race. The race has proved to be a real challenge for Verstappen and Russell, with the latter one starting from the pit lane due to him taking a new engine after the qualifying session because he ended P11 on Saturday. So far, the Singapore GP hasn't ended without the presence of the safety car. This means a lot when it comes to the outcome of the race, especially here when the track was drying up quickly, but not as quickly as Monaco earlier this season. Many were eager to see who will pull the trigger first and to go to dry tyres, and the decision was made by Russell. The Briton, however, needed a lot of time to bring heat to those tyres, and the track hasn't proved to be dry enough for this stint, especially in Sector 3. There were lots of sectors on the map where the drivers intentionally drove on the wet part of the track so that they could cool the intermediate tyres. The first safety car was caused by Joe and Latifi, with the Canadian blocking the Chinese driver and causing a crash at Turn 5. This was at lap 11, and it was evident that it was very, very early to pit for dry tyres, so the leading pack kept on going with the intermediate tyres. Perez didn't leave anything to the case and was 100% focused, not wanting to have another flashback moment from France where he didn't reset properly during the VSC restart. At this time, Verstappen was behind Alonso in P7, chasing the Spaniard for P6, and it was evident that the Dutchman will have a hard time passing the two-time world champion. However, Alpine had a miserable weekend, and it was so bad that they lost the lead to McLaren for P4 in the Constructors' Championship in just one race event. Both of their cars retired, with Alonso being the first one after his engine just decided to blow off on itself. The same fate met Ocon later on in the race, on a weekend that turned out to be a literal nightmare for the enston based team. After qualifying fifth on Sunday, Alonso wasn't able to finish the race, and according to him, he lost around 60 points due to mechanical issues. It's nothing new when it comes to Alpine and its reliability, which was one of the reasons why Red Bull decided to move away from its engines in 2018. When talking after the Singapore GP, Alonso said, Not happy, for sure a little bit disappointed. Once more, I think I was minus 50 points already this year with the mechanical issues. So we add another 10, so I'm minus 60. And if you add 60 points to my standings, I think we were in another league. The race was finished by just 14 drivers on the grid, with six of them retiring due to either mechanical issues or crashes on the track. The track itself was very demanding when it comes to humidity and physical readiness, and the fact that Hamilton and Verstappen both did mistakes that could have cost much more than they initially did says everything you need to know about this circuit. Hamilton was chasing signs, and on lap 33, he had a comfortable 14 seconds lead ahead of Norris. The seven-time world World champion was in constant DRS distance of the Spaniard, but due to the wet conditions, he wasn't able to use the system to ease the passing. Under pressure, he locked up on the brakes and hit the barriers with the nose of the car. Fortunately for him, he was able to reverse the car and visit the pits after being passed by Norris. He had to change his front wing, which ultimately cost him severe points, and it didn't help Mercedes that Russell also had a very bad weekend as well. The team brought new upgrades here and hoped to score the first win of the season, but we saw that they are still very far away from this achievement. On the other hand, Verstappen also tried a risky move in order to pass Norris. 
After yet another virtual safety car restart, the Dutchman tried to pass Norris but locked up with his rear wheels and just continued to drive straight. He lost all of the positions he gained throughout the race and had to pit because the medium compound tires were already wasted due to the lockup. He had a hard race ahead of him, but you know what they say, racers always remain racers, and Verstappen was able to finish P7 and gain valuable four points for his championship. However, the streak ended at five, and Vettel's streak of nine consecutive tracks won still remains intact and won't be under threat for the remainder of this season. Of course, it wasn't all bad stuff in Singapore. Excitement means good stuff too. Just go ahead and ask Perez. He managed to be the first driver after a long time to win Monaco and Singapore in the same season, and he is now just two points behind Leclerc for the P2 spot in the championship. What's even more important is that the Mexican was able to prove that he won't bend under pressure, and as soon as the DRS was enabled and Leclerc was pushing for the win, it was like Perez found a sudden pace in his RB18 and managed to pull a decent advantage of almost eight seconds. McLaren had a perfect weekend, and what's even more interesting is the fact that Ricardo was finally able to score points for the Woking base team. On top of that, he didn't score scrappy points as he finished P5 and managed to bring 10 points to the team in the Constructors' Championship fight with Alpine. The UK-based team is now ahead of Alpine, with Norris finishing P4 and ahead of Ricardo, and we have been reassured yet again that we are going to have an exciting battle for that fourth spot in the championship. Of course, it's unlikely that both Alpine drivers will be yet again outside of the points, and given the fact that Ricardo has struggled in the 2022 season, it's very unknown as to what kind of season he'll have in the remainder of the five races. Another team that was able to capitalize strongly this weekend is Aston Martin. The British team was very decent throughout the qualifying session, with Stroll finishing P12 but starting P11 due to Russell starting from the pits. Vettel started at the back of the grid, but we all know that the four-time world champion can prove himself on Sunday, especially on a track that he has won before in 2019. That is why he was able to climb the grid successfully and finished P8 as Stroll finished P6. Thanks to these points, the UK-based team was able to gain 12 points and has jumped both Haas and Alpha Tauri in the Constructors' Championship. They are now chasing Alfa Romeo, and given the fact that the Italian team is having a lot of problems with the reliability of its engine, we won't be surprised if Aston Martin finished P6 at the end of this season. Disappointing weekend yet again for Haas and Alfa Tauri, as the latter team managed to win just one point through Gasly and is now tied with Haas for P8. However, this isn't something that the team was headed towards at the beginning of the season, as we all know how good Gasly was in the previous two seasons. Still, it's something that the team will have to work on in the remainder of the season and try to push towards a better one in 2023, now that De Vries will race for them and Gasly will likely go to Alpine. That was our recap on the Singapore GP, and we hope that you watched it and enjoyed it until the very last second. The championship fight hasn't been decided here, and it's evident that the fights in the midfield and for the lower places are going to be interesting ones until the end of the season.